Okay, we're filing our bill in equity federal lawsuit. We got our certificate of non-response and uh, I've uh, hidden her name again and there's my phone. And just for the record, nothing I say is legal advice. I'm just documenting what I'm doing. So we got our certificate of non-response, okay? And I may, I didn't mail, she mailed, she mailed, and then she gave me this, okay? So, and it's signed by her. I'm not going to show you her name because you always protect your notary. So, what's the next, uh, what's the next phase? So, the next phase is going to be coming up with the money for the filing fee, which I have done. And then we're going to get all of our paperwork squared away and read uh, some paperwork that I got from the district court. And we're going to file paperwork. So we have a summons. We have a summons. This is ORS's copy. Office of Recovery Services. These scumbags that have screwed my life up for the last 20 years. Certificates of service for everything. We have a copy of the bill and equity for the judge. Can't really see it because I have a crappy phone. And the pictures are pretty crappy. Uh, envelopes, 3811 forms, certified mail. They're getting a foot. That's the United States District Court right there. There's the cover sheet that goes with the originals. And a copy for the judge. And then I also am going to send them a copy of what ORS is getting. I wrote it right down on there. Copy of paperwork sent to RRS for certified mail number seen above. Per certified mail seen above. So there's no discrepancies here, right? Uh, we did a summons ourselves. A lawsuit has been filed against you. Please contact them. So to receive the case number, you are in receipt. As per the certificate of mail service number, there it is right there. Uh, so Let's see what we've done. So basically what we did, man, is we, we sent them a notice. Okay, we started with a notice. And I'm not going to read all this to you because I don't want this to be too long. And I just got home from work. But we sent them a notice. And guess what they did? Now this is right out of the code book. In the ordinary course of business, when good faith requires an answer... It is the duty of the party receiving a letter from another to answer within a reasonable time. They fail to respond and they are in dishonor. Otherwise, he is presumed to admit the propriety of the acts mentioned in the letter of his correspondent and to adopt them. Okay? They fail to respond. They're in dishonor. And they are admitting and agreeing to the acts mentioned in the letter. Okay? Not going to go through the letter with you again. But through their silence, they gave consent. Okay? It's just like the last one I did with the validation of debt letters. If they don't respond, you're in dishonor. And everything I said in the original correspondence, you are now in agreement with, and it is now valid. And I love this one, too. This is why you use a notary public, because a protest, which would have been something that they sent, which they didn't, a protest is a certificate of dishonor made by a United States consul or vice consul or a notary public or other person authorized to administer oaths by the law of the place where dishonor occurs that may be made upon information satisfactory to that person. You can read the rest. Just stop it. That's why you use a notary. Okay? Because they are a person. They are a, basically a, a court clerk. I mean, they're, they're a secretary of state certified. So they're basically um, who has the authority to make those kind of decisions. So, somebody asked me, too, about the bill in equity. And I wanted to share this with you. This is right out of the, um, I think it's the 8th edition, Black's Law Dictionary. Okay? 
and it's under the word bill. A formal written complaint, such as a court paper, okay, is that what we're doing? We're writing up a complaint, aren't we? Okay, a court complaint, yeah. Requesting some specific action, yes, for reasons alleged, yeah, okay. So, so far, an equitable pleading by which a claimant brings a claim in a court of equity. Bill in equity, right there. Court of equity, right? Before the merger of law and equity, so it's already telling you that they merged common law and equity, the bill in equity was analogous, which means basically together, to a declaration in law. The nine parts of every equitable bill are, and I'll let you read these, but I'm going to blow this up just a little bit because I got a place right up, right down here. It says, are you booger? Of course, it's giving me problems. Okay. So it says also termed bill and equity. And then it says C, right? Declaration which is what we did. We put up a declaration, also termed bill in chancellery, bill in chancellery, bill of chancellery, and bill of equity. But the term right here is also termed a bill in equity. Okay? So that's what the bill is. Okay? That's why we're doing a bill in equity because it's right in the law book. Black's Law Dictionary. Okay, and you can read this too. Okay, this is clean hands. What is clean hands? Sometimes called the clean hands doctrine. Okay, and that basically says you have to have clean hands. And the other one is good faith, right? It says clean hands. The plaintiff comes to this court with clean hands in good faith. And what does it say? The term good faith is used in many areas of the law but it has special significance in commercial law. Okay? So you can read that. Just stop it real quick. Okay? Moving on. So what have we created? Uh, we used this word before. We have created an estoppel in law, a bar that prevents a person. What's a person? It's a corporation from presenting evidence contradicting a certain established fact. It's established already, right? In our bill in equity, there are no facts in controversy. Why? Because we followed the administrative process. We used a third party and a fourth party, the post office, to verify. And now they have created an estoppel in law and they are not allowed to move forward with anything because I gave them three strikes. Now you're out. So I'll leave you with this. What could they possibly do once this lawsuit is filed? I, I just, I, I can't come up with anything. Okay. There are no facts in controversy. They had a chance. They failed to respond. I've documented it, and they've agreed that if they don't respond, that they'll pay me. And that's all I got. I mean, I really, there, there's nothing more to say. And before I end this video, too, if you go to the United States District Court .com .gov, whatever it is, uh, and you search, they have a guide, okay? And it's for pro se litigants. Uh, they have another one for attorneys, but obviously you're not the attorney. Um, it's only 26 pages long. And a lot of it doesn't have anything to do with you. But uh, I wanted to show you a few things. Okay. On the second, third page here, whatever. Important issues. Procedures for filing a civil rights action. Actions brought by prisoners. Unemployment discrimination. How to proceed uh, as a pauper, request for appointment of counsel, okay? Then they got the list of the court fees, applications, motions, okay? So they got it all in here. 
So, if you read, okay. So, I'm going to skip around. Um, but as I'm reading through this 26-page document, a couple of things stood out, okay? Number one, when you're doing a bill in equity and you're just going in for summary judgment, and once again, I know I've said this a couple of times, but there's no facts in controversy. That means, see what it says here? Although the staff and clerks are provided, you know, with information, court rules and procedures, they are forbidden as a matter of law from providing legal advice and interpreting court rules, blah, blah, blah. Well, now wait a minute. Court rules and procedures? Well, I don't need to know any of that because guess what? There's no oral argument. There's no facts in controversy. I'm just going in for summary judgment. So I've saved myself six months worth of reading and trying to learn court procedures and rules and their little backdoor, you know, their little the bullshit. I don't need to know all that because I'm just going in there for summary judgment because the case has already been decided. And of course, they have to put this in here too. Rule 11 prohibits the filing of lawless that are clearly frivolous or filed only to harass somebody. Well, it's not about harassing anybody, you know? So this is also important. Is this court the appropriate court? Well, let's look. Okay, federal courts can only hear limited kinds of cases. As is the case, federal courts authorized to hear disputes fall into, that fall into the following four categories. It doesn't say they have to be all four, okay? Well, let's look at it. Those that deal with a question involving the United States Constitution. Uh, well, the Constitution says that my, um, my ability to contract is unlimited. So, yes, it is in the Constitution, the contract. Remember, contract makes the law. Okay? Those that involve questions of federal as opposed to state law. Well, is child support federal? Sure is. Okay, so I got two out of two. Those that involve the United States of America as a party whether defendant, uh, plaintiff or defendant. Eh, uh, that's questionable. The United States is a corporation, uh, Office of Child you know, Health and Human Services, Child Support. Yes, that's all United States. It's not United States of America. But, you know, we're, we're not going to argue about that. So we're two and a half out of three. And it involved a dispute among residents of different states. Okay? Now remember, I'm not a state corporation. Okay? with an amount in controversy over $75,000. So we're talking about a state citizen and a federal bureaucracy, right? So I would go, I'm three out of four, okay? At least three out of four. Okay, let's go down here. Filing a complaint. The plaintiff or person bringing a lawsuit must file a complaint, okay? Amended complaint, bill in equity. Got it. The complaint can be filed by hand, blah, 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 blah. Whether you deliver it, doesn't matter. <gasps> What does it say here? You must submit an original and one copy of the complaint. Okay, that would be the original and a copy. That's the one for the judge. A completed cover sheet. Okay, I showed you that. We got that. A copy of which can be attained from the clerk's office. $400 filing fee. We got that. And if you're going to go popper, then you got to fill out all this other crap. Okay. The complaint outlines a problem or reason for the suit, also known as cause of action. We have that. The complaint is given a case number and assigned to a district judge. Okay, perfect. Serve the complaint. Each defendant or person whom the plate claims responsible for the problem notify the lawsuit through a process that is spe specified under law. Okay, responsibility of notifying each defendant rests with the plaintiff and is referred to as service of process to provisions Service process or in Rule 4. Okay, we all know that. Defendant can be notified by a summons. Okay, we got the summons, right? Now, it says right here, after you complete the summons, staff members of the clerk's office officially issue the summons. Ha, huh. okay. So you fill out the summons and then you give it to them and they send it in. Perfect. I love it. This means that an authorized court employee will sign the form and emboss it with official seal. The summons and complaint are then served on the defendant. Okay? So, okay. So, there's our civil cover sheet. 
That's the originals underneath there. There's the other copy for the judge. And there's the copy over there with the summons. And there's the summons. There's a certificate of service for everything. It's got all the different stuff written down on there. Okay, bill and equity, affidavit, notarization, no, or a notice of acceptance, notice of default, certificate of non-response, certificate of services, uh, proof of mailings, exhibits, right, confirmation letter, copies for ORS. It's all done certified. Going to the United States District Court. There it is. Okay, got everybody. And uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll find out what happens. Peace.